analyst for the economically exploited. But the important, the most important event in the history of Indian fiction in English was the appearance on the scene of its trio, Muntra, Anand, Arkinainen, and Raja Rao. They, in a way, made the foundation of Indian fiction in English. And they were labeled by William Alls as the founding fathers, the genuine novelists, and the inaugurator of the form. Now, to the most people uh, of my generation, Gandhi is only a name. And we sometimes find it hard to believe that such a man ever walk on earth in flesh and blood. Yet the history of the first half of 20th, uh, 20th century is in India is largely the history of a man called Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. And the immense influence, influence he exercised on socio political and economic Namika Katari of the subcontinent, Namika Katari. if not okay. the entire world. So he's being talked about in every field, be it literature, politics. Click on the top presenting icon, Anamika. History, researchers, so research, and many others. So numerous books, articles, or researches are being done on, on, on Gandhism, on Gandhian ideology, on Gandhian philosophy. So in order to attempt to bring back Gandhian idols of peace, nonviolence, harmony, brotherhood, Instead of a world which waits for, waits for another, for third world war, so to say. So now I'll, I'll move on to the other part that is Gandhi and literature. So Gandhi remained an influential figure in Indian life and literature too. Gandhi was a prolific writer, you know, and one of his most uh, important writings, you know, uh, one of Gandhi's Ali's publications rather includes the Hind Swaraj, published in Gujarati. Later, it became the intellectual blueprint for India's independence movement. He also edited several newspapers like Harijan in Gujarati, The Opinion in English, again, when he was in South Africa, and Young India in English, and Navajivan, a Gujarati monthly. He, all, he has also authored several books, including his own autobiography, The Experiment, sorry, The Story of My Experiments with Truth. He also wrote about his uh, experience in South Africa in a volume called Shatagra. He also wrote, you know, uh, a, a paraphrase rather for John Raskin's Unto His Last. He, also, he has also written extensively on issues like, you know, vegetarianism, diet, religion, social reforms, etc. So from Anand to Sarjit Naidu, Dominic Latour to George Orwell, Kushivan Singh to Vaisen Naipaul, almost all during Gandhi, post Gandhi, and contemporary writers somewhere referred to Gandhi, to the life of Bapu in their works. Thus they have brought different interpretations to his sayings sketched fictional characters on his principles and composed verses on his thoughts. In fact, one of the famous poetess, Sharjuni Naidu, in one of her uh, sonnets, Lotus, which was dedicated to Mother Sarajani Gandhi, where she uh, compares uh, <clears throat> Gandhi as an eternal lotus who becomes the source of inspiration and strength for billions. When, when she says, I quote, O mystic lotus, sacred and sublime, in married petal grace inviolate, supreme over transient storms of tragic fate, deep rooted in the waters. Later, uh, Mahatma's influence is also markedly discernible in, in, in fictions uh, in such fictions as Kamala Markandiya's Some Inner Fury, Abbas's Inkalab, K. Nagarajan's Chronicles of Kedaram, 
Bhavani Bhattacharya's So Many Hungers and Salih Sadhu from Ladakh, Anand Lal's The House at Adampur, Lambert, Marchina's Sorrow Lies in the Land, Nainthana Segal's A Time to Be Happy, Mahan Malgankar's A Bend in the Ganges, and Sushant Thakur's The Great Indian Novel. So Gandhi has always remained an, a subject of universal thought throughout the world. So it would be interesting for us to see how Indian novelists have used Gandhian theme in their novels since British Raj till independent India. So Gandhian ideology lent reference to novelists for a reference to look up for their stories. It linked them to the soil. It connected, connected to the roots of, to the Indian roots. It created them a social awareness and helped them interpret social reality. It made them, it made them think, it made them look at man as a social animal, an individual with his responses and reactions. It sent them searching for national identity. So Gandhism as a distinct phenomena or a, or a distinct influence in Indian fiction and English in the mid thirties was felt with the publication of Anand's Kuli, Untouchable, The Soul and the Sickle, Rajarvaj Kantapura, and then uh, we have uh, 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 and events are unity among all religions, especially Hindu Muslim unity. So, Gandhiji has always propagated that in order to get independence or in order to get India free out of the class of the British, it is the need of the hour to get these two communities together. So, he always worked for this Hindu Muslim unity. Right. So, the other, other aspect is that he he was always of the view that people should not resort to violence or protest. Rather, people should be non-violent and they should not use domestic arms like lattes, sharp weapons, and stop picketing and looting places. Gandhi also of the view, or rather he you know, advocated that the evil, social evils that were predominant during the pre-independent uh, pre India, all this is still prevalent, but during that period, it was, you know, it was like a plague, right? It would plague the society. So it's issues like untouchability, casteism, enmity among classes, hatred, lying, swearing. So the other thing, he, he, he felt it was the need of the hour to, to, you know, remove these evils from the society. Then only we will be in a position to bring the entire country under one umbrella in order to defeat the British. So he always talked about you know, brotherhood. He always spread love and unity among all races instead. He was, he was also against you know, the consumption of tobacco, ganja smoking, gambling, uh, using slang. He, he also uh, wanted Indian men to treat the women folk in a better way, in a compassionate way at home. He, 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 was, he also advocated during his mass gatherings and meetings, he always uh, appealed to the people to boycott foreign goods. Instead, they should use local goods so that the local economy can grow. He also, he, he also used to you know, tell people to, to you know, to boycott educational, economic, and legal, legal institution as well. He also advised people on a number of occasions to you know to take to spin, to weave, to, to make their own clothes rather, right? To cultivate, to study, to learn and teach. So they should have a proper family planning and all. And he always believed in simple living and self-sacrifice and self-purification. He also you know 
felt that people should not be the hill seeker. Somebody who is in need of hell should not be betrayed at any cost. You know, people, they should be honest. They should be progressive. They should be self-confident. They only, they only will be <clears throat> able to raise, to rise above our, you know, limits, so to say. So she was somebody who believed in truth and truth should be, and, the, and, and, and that should be applied in every individual in their lives. So this is how he wanted people to bring them to own umbrella. So, <clears throat> so keeping in, in mind these, the points that I have just discussed, I'll be, you know, uh, I'll be focusing on the three novels of three different authors as to see how, as you see, the impact of Gandhian thoughts and ideologies on this particular text. So let's begin with uh, Mulgar Anand's Untouchable. Okay. So Anand's work, Untouchable, reveals uh, Anand's deep influence of, of Gandhian philosophy. He has emphasized on social problems of poor, downtrodden, oppressed, low caste of Hindu society and their inherent exploitation. So this novel has, you know, it, it basically covers the time uh, of pre-independence era when poverty, casteism, superstition, exploitation of untouchables were predominant. It was like a plague-like situation. So, so the theme of uh, the influence of, of you know Gandhi on uh, Anand was remarkable. He was drawn towards Gandhi for his serenity, love of truth, humanity, especially his great love for the poor and the and the, and the sufferings, and his tireless uh, effort to uplift them morally, materially, and spiritually as well. So Gandhi had, uh, Anand had a personal contact with, with uh, Gandhi because he had the opportunity to visit the Savarati Vashram and where he got very close to him. So in this particular novel, you know, Gandhi makes a cameo appearance and he inspired many people while some other characters while other characters work and think under the under his influence. So it is untouchable. It's basically a story of a socially crossed protagonist, Bakha, a sweeper boy. So if we uh, see that almost all the protagonists of Anand, uh, you know, they basically belong to the lower strata of the society. Like we have Bhikkhu, a cobbler in Koli, Gangu, a labor in the leaves and the soil, Lal Singh, a peasant and soldier in the village across the black waters. So this particular novel you know, depicts the poignant condition of the untouchables and the inevitable hardships and physical and mental tor tortures they had to undergo at the hands of the people of higher caste. So the chief duty of the protagonist, what does he do? He does, you know, he cleans latrines and he hates his job, he loathes his life because the, and, and because of the fact that the people uh, of his caste were not allowed to go to temple and other places, this kind of restrictions were there during that time. I think it's, it's still prevalent, it's still found, we, we often come across this kind of news in, in day, day in and day out. So. The situation, even the situation was, was like this, that even if they does anything, even unintentionally, that thing gets polluted, you know. And, and this, these issues and these incidents, you know, hurt him badly, hurt Waka badly. And, and there's one incident in a novel where uh, his daughter, his sister rather, was molested by a priest. You know, uh, he was uh, rather, molested by the by the priest and that led in a way in a way to show 
that during the time, <coughs> so they have to stop if they have to stop or change their direction if someone from high class is coming or going from the same way. Due to the series of incidents, troubled, reminded a bit of experience, made Baka consider himself as an untouchable. Baka, he, she was, uh, I mean, his, his sister was denigrated by the temple priest who shamelessly tried to molest her while she was cleaning his house. Even Baka was on slapped by, the, by a high caste Hindu because he touched him, and according to him, Baka polluted him. So he shouted, he shouted at Baka and said, he shouted at Baka and said, why don't you call, I quote, why don't you call you shrine and announce your ap approach? Do you know you have touched me and defiled me? Now I will have to go to take bath and to be yourself. So, the, so the, the, you can see the, the kind of trauma, the kind of torture, the people like Baka and his community has to undergo during that time. So everyone whom Baka meets, the sweet vendor, the soldier, the temple priest, the teacher, the bullock driver, you know, sees him uh, in relation to ritually polluting profession that he has, you know, he inherited from his forefathers. Huh. So there is one occasion in the novel where Gandhi arrives uh, to you know to address a meeting the place is called Golbag where he delivers he delivers a speech on the need of ending untouchability from India so he was as you know that he was very keen for uplifting the untouchables and he calls them Harijans and he regards untouchability as the greatest curse on humanity so in on in that particular uh, meeting address he Gandhi says I quote, as you all know, while we are asking for freedom from the grief of a foreign nation, we have ourselves for centuries trampled underfoot millions of human beings without feeling the slightest remorse of our iniquity. For me, the question of these people is moral and religious. So uh, somewhere uh, he, uh, the protagonist, Baka, reaches there to listen to Gandhi's address. And he, out of his surprise, he finds the uh, people from his own village, right? From his own colony. I mean, I mean, he finds their Muslims, he finds their Hindus, he finds their Lalas. OK, so this reflects Gan uh, Anand's consciousness towards Gandhi's principles of equality, love for helpless. And Baka somehow Somewhere he realizes that it is only Mahatma Gandhi who could bring unity among all classes and caste. And he knew that it was the need of the hour to bring everyone, irrespective of, irrespective of the caste, creed, and religion, to bring them under one banner to unite them in order to fight the mighty British. So, so his speech, you know, Gandhi's speech, gives him a hope, a solace, a, bit, a hope for a better tomorrow. When you know, Gandhi says, I quote, I regard untouchability as the greatest blot on Hinduism, unquote. So Baka feels that at least someone is there, you know, someone is there for him and his caste. And he finds relief in Gandhi's words, you know. He gets some sort of strength. It, it, it gives him, you know, strength, right? So Gandhi brings the Hindus, the Muslims, and the people of other sectors, less than one umbrella, cries for humanity, so it gives a new sense of identity to Baka that he's not untouchable. He's not untouchable any longer. He's, he's a human being. He's, now he's, he's just realizing it when he sees that, 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 that people from his colony have gathered to listen to a figure like Andi under, under the one canopy. This gives him some sort of you know, strained, and he starts considering himself as a human being. Earlier, he used to loathe his life, right? So Gandhi announces that he regards untouchability as a sin and gives a new sense of hope to the whole text and a hope that India will build as a nation of humanity and fraternity. So 
Gandhi just finished his speech by declaring that all the public wells, temples, schools, roads, and sanitations must be made open to the untouchables. So, so it was not earlier; it was not accessible to the people from our other caste. So Gandhi made this statement in his speech that these places should be accessible to the untouchables. So Baka notified that to Gandhi, his presence is given a real possibility of, of recognizing himself a human being in his own society. So he, this, this uh, in a way, you know, fills his heart with hope. He's filled with hope that, and he tries to, and he, he, he wants to share these thoughts or words of Gandhi with his father. So the, so the novel ends with the hope that the, of a better life for the untouchable. So now I will move on to my next novel, my next text, that is Raja Rawer Kantapura. So this particular novel deals with Gandhi and Gandhi revolution and its impact on a small South Indian village called Kantapura. It depicts how the whirl, whirlwind of Gandhian revolution shakes the little village to its very roots. So, Gandhi, <clears throat> Raja Rao shows the change by portraying the type of village that Kantapura is before Gandhian ideas make their you know, impact on it. So, it is uh, in this novel. So, Kantapura is a traditional caste ridden village which is far away from all modern ways of life, living and development taking place in the cities. So, in this novel, so there is a description of Brahmin quarter, Pariya quarter, Potter quarters, Weaver quarters, and Shudra quarters. So, the idea behind uh, showing these socio economic divisions of the village in the very beginning of the no novel by is, is is only to emphasize that the gradual transformation it undergoes through the impact of Gandhian philosoph philosophy so so the no so the uh, village you know undergoes a, a, a thought change you know a severe change so murti we know the murti the protagonist of the novel, who is inspired by Gandhian philosophy of unity and nonviolence, and every and that every person is equal, and they must be, and they must unite to gain freedom. And he is the one who leads Gandhian movement in Kantapura. So, in in case of this novel, what he uh, sees that Gandhian ideals are being focused through Murti. Gandhi is not physically anywhere present in the novel, but his ideas are, uh, but the whole novel is in a way suffused with his ideas, you know, ideas, his philosophy, like nonviolence, unity and nonviolence, brotherhood. So, Murti goes to the city and he gets familiar with Gandhian philosophy and came back to village. Like Gandhi, he is he is also sac self-sacrificial in nature, and he, and G like Gandhi, he also dedicated himself to the progress of the village. Like, like uh, Gandhi did, he abandoned his, you know, uh, his profession, which was a barrister, and, and he, uh, he, he started living a simple life and devoted his entire life to the cause of India. Okay, so. Murti never met Gandhi, yet he follows Gandhi, you know, he follows Gandhi's ideals in, 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 in a high spirit, you know, he wears Khadi clothes and fights against untouchability. And he also counsels the um, the, you know, the um, uh, the woman folk of the village, right? And he, and he advises them, I quote, to wear clothes spun and oven with your own good given hands is sacred, say, says the Mahatma. And it gives work to the workless and work to the lazy. And if you don't need the cloth, sister, give it away to the poor. Our country is being bleed to death by foreigners. We have to
to protect our mother. So, unquote. So, he is, in a way, engaging themselves in some sort of conversation to make them aware of the, you know, the political happenings taking place outside the village and making them aware of the importance of, you know, making their own clothes. And if the, in the, in the, in the surplus of the leopard amounts can be distributed among the poor or the needy. He, like, and he also observes first, he also organizes Shatagraha, he also undergoes punishment and gets arrested by police. <clears throat> in the early parts of the novel, we find Gandhi's tales are, you know, interpreted with Harikatha, you know, and Jai Ramachar, the narrator of Harikathas, he narrates stories every evening based on Gandhi and his idols, where, you know, he equalizes Swaraj with Shiva. I quote, Shiva has three eyed and Swaraj too has three eyed self purification Hindu Muslim unity, and Khadr. He manages to bring Swaraj in, in his every topic of discussion. So this fellow, Jai Ramachar, used to, you know, narrate Harikathas every evening based on the lives of Gandhi and his works uh, in, order, in order to cultivate those uh, ideals among the villagers. Uh, he used to, you know, to, just to inspire them, the, just to, uh, so that they follow, follow the, path, the path Murti has opened for them. So Jairamachar in this, you know, connects this particular thing with, with the story of Hindu mythology and, and tells, I quote, you remember how Krishna, when he was but a babe of four, had begun to fight against demons and had killed the serpent Kalya. So to our Ma Mohandas began to fight against the enemies of the country, more and more men followed him as they did Krishna, the flute, play the flute player. And so he goes from village to village to slay the serpent of the foreign rule Fight, says he, but harms no sure. Love all, says he. He's a saint, the Mahatma. You know how he fasts and prays? And even his enemies fall at his feet. Unquote. So, Jairamachar is, uh, you know, uh, in every evening he used to narrate these feats of uh, Mahatma, you know, to, you know, make them, you know, aware of the things happening around uh, uh, you know all over India during that period and 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 the figure the kind of you know you know Gandhi as a, as a colossal figure he you know he, he was someone who always advocated love he and uh, he always practiced love in his so so then Murti proceeds to bridge the gap in society created by untouchability and casteism which was Gandhi's biggest challenge to bring untouchable into the mainstream. He said centuries of caste practice had stifled into the people's mind, and it is an affable task to remove the rigid blocks so that humanity could freely flow. So Murti was uh, <clears throat> aware of the fact that he has an affable task at his hand because uh, it was a very, uh, you know, it was very tough, you know, very difficult uh, time to, you know, the kind of division was there due to this caste system and untouchability. So, so he worked really on, uh, hard on those lines so that this gap could be bridged to bring the untouchables at the main, mainstream and to eradicate the caste system, so that people can, you know, can be, can be, they can be united, so that they can get under on banner, on canopy, on umbrella. So this was Murti's purpose, you know. So there is one uh, quote which, 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 uh, which, in a way, defines Murti and his character and, and his interviews uh, towards uniting people. In Kantapura, I quote, so Murti goes from house to house and from younger brother to elder brother and from elder to the grandfather himself. 
what do you what do you think? He even goes to the potter's quarter and the weaver's quarter and the sudra quarter. We say to ourselves, he's one of the Gandhi men. We say there is neither caste, nor clan, nor family. And yet they pray like us, they live like us. They only say to one should not marry early. One should allow widows to take husbands. And a, and a Brahmin might marry a Pariya, and a Pariya a Brahmin, unquote. So these, these are the efforts uh, Murti started you know, making. He started visiting from one house to another. He started, you know, uh, pe people, you know, uh, to engage them in, in, in some sort of conversation to make them, you know, uh, or to create some sort of political awareness among people of all age and all class, so to say. So, although he belonged to, uh, belonged to upper, upper status society, but he didn't bother to visit it. Uh, you know, he didn't bother to visit the potter's quarters, the wafer quarters, and the sudra quarters, because he knew the task before him is an affable one. So he, you know, exerted all the efforts or all he used all the resources that he had at his disposal. So, so Gandhi is not a character in the novel. His presence is immensely felt. The Gandhi's pro program of Swadeshi, abolition of untouchability and casteism, and the economies of Charka and Khadi spread in Kantapura, which with enthusiastic men and women who formed voluntary corps. So there are other youths besides uh, Murti who took active participation, uh, who, who formed, you know, voluntary, who voluntarily get themselves engaged in the programs that were organized in Kantapura. Okay, so the novel sketches the step-by-step -step social development of a village and its people who following Gandhi and his thoughts and become successful to redeeming their village from the social levels of untouchability, casteism, women backwardness, and disunity. So both the novels, you know, Untouchable and Kantapura follow Gandhian thoughts and his principles of nonviolence, truth, brotherhood, Shatyagraha, and his views on untouchability. So in Untouchability, in Untouchable, his views give a hope for a good life for the downtrodden. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, Kantapura shows in a different way the influence of Gandhi's struggle for India's independence and its impact on the people of a small village called Kantapura. With this, I will uh, move on to the third novel that is Akhenarayan's The Waiting for Mahatma. So this particular novel, The Waiting for Mahatma, Narayan uh, deals with the impact of Gandhian thought on Indian political life. So Gandhi is there as one of the characters, unlike the other novels where he wasn't present as a character. But here we see the uh, slight di difference, you know, uh, that he's there as a character. But the story is not about Gandhi either. Okay, so the novel is sh shared <coughs> when Gandhi launched his Quit India program in 1942. So Narayan brings in Mahatma, the Mahatma, as a normal character who is accurate to the historical persona of Gandhi in his novel. He portrays the Indian freedom movement and its powerful impact which led to India's, which led to India's independence. So the events in Waiting for Mahatma, like supporting the Swadeshi goods, the jail horror movement, the violence practiced of the police on the innocent Satyagrahis, people's donation for the welfare of the untouchables, it all you know, stirred the inner cause of all patriotic Indians as Gandhi praised them how to be and what to do by being their true existing model. So, uh, the way to Mahatma actually is an embodiment of Gandhian ideology in the characters of Siram and Varti. So this uh, even Mahatma, though Gandhian in theme, had its two main characters, Sriram and Varti, a pair of lovers. 
the national struggle for freedom that is led by the Mahatma who occupies the center stage hides behind its shadow a love story of Varti and Sriram, which provides moments of tenderness, romance, and disappointment. So the choice of characters, so Narayan's choice of only two characters to embody Gandhian ideology of love and self-purification is justified by his perception, which is only one personality makes sense in any age. This you know, this particular novel uh, depicts the progress of Sriram's transformation into a Gandhian activist whose narrative perishes throughout the novel explicitly because of his love for Varti and implicitly because Gandhian ideology, which is core it lies, changing lies under the Gandhian influence and philosophy. As you know that <clears throat> he is someone who is not uh, you know, he's not serious or he's not committed. Like we have Varti and Murti, he gets into, he, uh, you know, he gets into Gandhian fold only because of his love for Varti, which drags him towards that. Okay. So Sri Ram is overwhelmingly occupied with Varti, but he's, he's not merely a pursuit for Varti, a Gandhian follower. His love and pursuit for Varti signifies his search for a frame of reference for life. And Varti is the agent for this. So Gandhi's ideas, preachings, existence, manifest his significant role in bringing love, good advice, and self education and development. The views of Mahatma have been conveyed and praised through his speeches and letters. So in one of his, uh, in Mahatma's philosophy in life, in the words, quote, we have a system of our own to follow. That's Ramdan, spinning on charka and practice the truth and non-violence, which I have already discussed, you know, these three principles, you know, uh, he has, he has, or these ideas are being used by Raja Rao and uh, Murtaz Anand in his, in their novels. So with the main story of Sriram and Varti, Narayan has depicted untouchables of Malgudi. Now, again, we come across untouchables here of Malgudi, of which creates the real picture of the untouchables of that era. So, and <clears throat> Gandhi here also speaks on Khadi and inspires people to use it. You know, wafers were within, wafers and within profession were considered untouchable, but Gandhi tried to convince the orthodox Hindus to change their wrong attitude towards both. So, this was the time, or during that time, you know, the wafers community used to weave clothes you know, they were looked down upon by the people from upper class society. People from the uh, upper class people used to look down look them upon. So he, was, he, he, you know, so Gandhiji, you know, advocated to change their attitude towards them. So Sriram's involvement in the movement, into the movement by Varti, who is more politically aware that he is than he is leads to his venture to formulate his Gandhian political idealism. His involvement in the cause is inspired by motives that are far from political. It's inspired by emotional motives towards Varti. But the distinction between the personal and the political in voting for Mahatma is impossible without Gandhi's existence as the main motivator for political and emotional actions of love. So there are plenty of references in the text. So for us, uh, the wedding for Mahatma is concerned. There is a, also a reference to Satyagraha, Salt Satyagraha in 1931. Siram, in his bid to enlighten the poor Indian, says, quote, for every pinch of salt you consume, you have to pay tax to the English government, unquote. He then elaborates about Mahatma Gandhi's march to Dandi Boys. Then again, there is a reference to 1920s non-cooperation movement. So what is father died during this movement? So people like Gorpad are there who remarks, I quote, I'll not rest till British are sent, to, sent out of India, unquote. So the whole novel, in a way, is uh, suffused with such ideas, Gandhian ideas. So Gandhi, another aspect is that, that Gandhi keeps on emphasizing on self-development by faith to implant his sustainability of 
spiritual development. As I have mentioned, that while talking about the <coughs> crask of the Gandhi, Gandhi ideologies, he how he you know encouraged the youth to you know for the for the purpose of self development. So here we came across the same issues here. So that's why he advises Hiram for self development. He advises him, I quote, spin and read Bhagavad Gita and utter Ram Ram, Ram Nam continuously. And then you will know what to do in life, unquote. Because Sriram is somebody who is very confused. He doesn't know what, what he wants in life because he, 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 he is, uh, you know, pulled uh, in, in, by two extremes. So Gandhi and Sriram extends, uh, you know, uh, letters. There is one instance where Gandhi writes to Sriram and says, I quote, your works will be a matter of faith. I cannot depend upon what you see or understand. Your conscience should be your guide in every action, unquote. So that's, it is observed that Narayan heavily <coughs> carries on his soldiers, the preaching of Gandhi through his character and the very price beside choice of words, incidents, and Gandhi's speeches. So the novel, in a way, you know, concludes uh, with the possibility of Siram getting married to Varti. So it is clearly observed that Siram adopts Gandhian philosophy by the transformation from materialism to spiritualism as Varti, who symbolizes India, who, who in a way, you know, embodies the quality of Mother India, charms him to go into the process of self-development. So Narayan uh, didn't want the mythification of Gandhi, which elevated him beyond the realms of real world. R rather, Anand tests Gandhian philosophy with an apath apathetic attitude of people who are more concerned with everyday affairs. And the veneer of idealism has slipped, an ugly reality lurking beneath. It is apparent. While Raja Rao captures the masses, you know, who are ready to sacrifice everything for Saras, Narayanan presents grim reality. Narayan, whereas Narayan presents grim reality of society two decades later, where not only his patriotic fervor subsided, but Gandhi has been relegated. So with this, I come to the concluding section of my talk. So, Srinivasan Anger, you know, has rightly pointed out that Gandhi is too big to be given as a minor part. And the best thing for the contemporary novelist would be to keep Gandhi in the background, you know, so to make his influence felt indirectly. This is what we have, you know, seen in the pre-independent, uh, in, the, in the novels that I have uh, discussed in my talk. So all the values, if adopted by people, not only in India, but around the world, this, should, this art would become a better place to live with no poverty and classes among people or the countries. According to Gandhiji, the basic ideal to pursue for everyone should be world peace, and universal brotherhood. And as such, it is worthy of our conscious consideration. So I would end with, uh, with an, with a, with an uh, a personal observation that Gandhiji was relevant. He is still relevant and he will remain. With this, I conclude my talk. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Zakir, sir. Uh, you very truly pointed out that how in uh, Kanthapura, though Gandhi was not a character in the novel, his presence was immensely felt. So if you allow, we can take some questions. Yes, sure. If there is any. Yes. Uh, anyone with the question? You can unmute and ask. Sir. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello. Yes, you're audible. Ask. Do I have a question? 
वॉट कुड बी दॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो ऑफ इंडिया ड्यूरिंग द इंडियन नेशनल मूवमेंट इफ गांधी जी वुडेंट बी देर Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, I got, I got your question right. It's a very uh, hypothetical one, right? The, the, the scenario would have been different, I guess, because his, uh, as you know, his role was immense. You know, he was the main force. He was the guiding force. Yeah. He was the one who you know, led the movement from the front. So I think when it is there, like this. Some other side side. Yeah. 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 Yes sir. Sakit? Yes sir. Yes sir. I think that there is there is lot of issue right now with regard to the sound and all. Yes yes so, sir. So it's not better we it's not better to have this question and answer session. Uh Zakir are you listening? Yes I can hear you sir. I can hear you. Yeah. Please sir, go ahead. Uh Zakir it was a very good lecture it was very well researched. Uh, it was very well organized also. It was she had bad luck of all of us that the the sound part was not good because of that technical snag there is lot of problem from to yesterday itself with regard to network and all that so perhaps that was the reason uh, but but yes this was a good lecture a very organized very well organized lecture uh, i would like to refer to the last part the concluding slide in which you were talking about srinivasa anger and his suggestion of keeping gandhi in the background i will just uh, like to mention uh, to to my students regarding two three more novels in which gandhi has been kept in the background one is atiya hosain's sunlight on a broken column in which gandhi and jin are both these two characters and the clash of ideology between these two character, uh, characters has been kept in the background in the novel but the very beautiful example of which i am very much impressed is the novel by babsi sidwa in the in the in the, in the, in the titled water in which gandhi appears only referentially in the last scene of the novel but it is so impactful it is so impressive uh thank you zakir thank you very much and all the best for your future uh, we we are very thankful to our students also to our faculty members to uh, all those students who joined from women's college and from other colleges of jamshedpur and porulia also we are extremely thankful to all of them thank you zakir bhai once again Thank you sir thank you so much Sakit Yes sir इसको हम लोग फॉर्मली खत्म करते हैं हाँ सर हाँ